Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. The lecture number 12 is related to preparation of different fabrics from natural dyeing. Because every fabric needs a different kind of treatise and as we go along we will see that preparation of different fabrics for natural dyeing is also one major aspect to be understood. How to prepare the fabric before natural dyeing? In preparation for dyeing or printing and finishing, raw cotton fabric is singed, decised, scoured, bleached and mercerized. These treatments eliminate non-cellulosic impurities and enhance the affinity of the fiber for dyes and finishes. Singeing is the first process to which the grey cloth is subjected. It is a mechanical treatment or finish to obtain a neat surface of the fabric or make it less hairy yarn. In a singeing machine, the yarn or fabric are exposed to direct flame or to the heated plates to burn the protruding fibers. It is also called gassing because these fibers can later on interfere with dyeing, so they should be removed. Singeing, in textile singeing also called as gassing, is a process applied to both yarn and fabric to produce an evenly surface by burning off projecting fiber, yarn ends and fuzz. This is accomplished by passing the fiber or yarn over a gas flame or heated copper plates. The main purpose of singeing is to burn the protruding fibers from the yarn and or fabric service. In order to burn the protruding fibers, energy must be supplied. Singeing is the first pretreatment process of textile wet processing technology. It helps to remove short loose fibers from the fabric and yarn. This is a mechanical process of reducing piling and short fibers. It has plenty number of advantages as well as disadvantages. Desizing. Before natural dyeing, it is essential to prepare fabric for desizing, scouring and possibly bleaching to remove impurities, sizing agents and any residual finishes that might hinder the dye absorption. Here the, are the steps for each of the processes. Desizing, what is the purpose? It removes the sizing agents like starch or any other substance used during the fabric manufacturing process. The process involves for cellulosic based fabric like cotton and linen, soak the fabric in cold water to loosen the sizing. Gently rub the fabric to remove the excess sizing. For protein based fabric like silk and cotton, use of mild detergent or enzyme based solution to break down the sizing and then it is rinsed thoroughly. This is how a desizing machine looks. On the left hand side the machine is shown. Desizing is the process of removing the size applied during weaving. The purpose of this fabric processing machinery is that desizing machine is to remove the sizing ingredients such as starch and gums. 
PVA etc. The starch has to be degraded into less water soluble molecules by hydrolysis. The hydrolysis of starch using enzymes under particular concentration, temperature and duration is called desizing. Desizing can be done at room temperature by boiling or even at boiling temperature as per the quality of the enzyme. Desizing machine speed can be lowered or raised for proper take up of the liquor for different grades of cloth. So, there are many changes that one can do with the desizing machine depending on the grade of the cloth. Different methods of desizing are enzymatic desizing which is used very commonly, oxidative desizing is also used commonly, acid steeping if not done carefully may cause degradation of cotton, rot steeping using bacteria mild but less effective in removing starches, desizing using hot caustic soda, hot washing with detergents. So, there are many ways of desizing of course, these are some of the chemical uh, common methods which involve less chemicals. Then comes the next step scouring. Scouring the purpose is to remove natural oils, waxes and other impurities from the, from the fabric particularly cotton and silk. They cannot be dyed without scouring. So, the scouring becomes an essential step for the preparation of the fabric for meant for natural dyeing. The process involves filling a large pot with water, adding a scouring agent like soda ash or washing soda or a mild detergent in 1 to 2 percent of the weight of the fabric, heating the water to around 160 which is 180 Fahrenheit which means it is 70 to 80 degrees centigrade, immersing the fabric and simmering it for 1 or 2 hours, stirring it occasionally. Then rinsing thoroughly with water to remove any residual scouring agent. So, this is a simple process, but it needs to be done because the, a, the fabric has to uh, remove its natural oil and waxes. If they are present there, then the natural dye will not adhere to the fabric. So, the scouring is as important as desizing and singeing. Scouring machine is shown on the left hand side. Scouring and washing machines are machinery which wash out the glues and the dirts on the fabric and improve the penetration and dyeing uh, property of the fabric. When the glue and dirt remain, it causes the unevenness and wrinkle. Therefore, it has to be done that before dyeing, they have to be removed and both for dyeing and printing, scouring is a must. Scouring is required for improving the wettability and absorbency of the fabric. In scouring process, typical use of alkalis like sodium hydroxide is needed. This helps to break down the natural oils and impurities to emulsify and suspend remaining dirt in the scouring bath. An innovative approach for scouring has been attained by using beta cyclodextrin in presence of wetting agent. Beta cyclodextrin accommodates the wax in its cavity, complexes with it and removes the impurity with the aid of wetting agent. Of course, this is a very novel and new idea of using beta cyclodextrin to remove the waxes, but traditionally scouring is done with the use of alkali because alkali can react with natural oils and waxes and emulsify them. Then comes bleaching. Of course, it is optional. 
The purpose is that it lightens the fabric color and removes any remaining impurities. Process is the choose a suitable bleach based on the fabric type and color for cellulose fiber hydrogen peroxide or oxygen bleach is often used. For protein fiber a dilute solution of hydrogen peroxide may be just suitable. So, because bleaching is very strong, it is a strong chemical reaction. We cannot take any risk with the fabric and we cannot destroy the fabric. So, therefore, if it is cotton one can use hydrogen peroxide or oxygen bleach, but for proteinaceous material which are softer in nature, very dilute solution of hydroxide hydrogen peroxide is used and that can do the bleaching. Follow the instructions of the bleach package for concentrations and application. Rinse the fabric thoroughly with water after bleaching. Rinsing and drying, each step desizing, scouring, bleaching if used, rinsing the fabric thoroughly with water to remove any remaining chemicals is a must. Because all these chemicals, if they are even present in trace quantities, can affect the natural dyeing. And we cannot jeopardize the natural coloring agent because that is our purpose of using natural dye. We want the intense color of the natural dye on the fabric and we are learning the chapter or the lecture in which we are learning how to prepare the fabric, natural fabric for dyeing with natural dyes. So, therefore, the purpose will be lost. Hence, we should use these steps very carefully singeing, scouring, bleaching, all these and desizing all these four steps are having their own importance. Allow the fabric to air dry between the steps to assess its color and condition. And we have after every step we need to wash it carefully, air dry and assess as to what is the condition of the fabric after that particular process. After singeing we will wash, after desizing we will wash, after scouring we will wash and after bleaching again we will wash and air dry it and then check the condition because then only we will know whether we will be, whether the fabric is ready for natural dyeing. Bleaching process, on the left hand side there is a bleaching machine, fabric bleaching machine, this is how it looks like. Bleaching is a process of decolorizing the material after it has been scoured. Usually after scouring there is a yellow tinge in the fabric. Usually after scouring there is a yellow tinge in the fabric and therefore that yellow color should be removed by bleaching. Bleaching textile can be classified as oxidative bleaching and reductive bleaching which can be carried out by oxidizing or reductive bleaching agents. Choosing the right kind of bleach, oxygen bleach or chlorine bleach are different types of bleach to help to remove the stain. So, the right choice of bleach, bleaching agent should be done. It should not be that you know we use anything for anything. Bleaching should be done very appropriately because bleaching is a very harsh process and appropriate bleaching as much as required is only carried out, should be carried out. Raw cotton contains natural colored impurities which significantly impairs the inherent white appearance of cotton. Bleaching helps to attain the pure white and bright material. Hydrogen peroxide is most common 
bleaching agent used in this purpose. Rapid H2O2 bleaching is carried out at alkaline pH between 10.5 to 12 pH at almost boiling water temperature. This causes significant damage to the fabric. So, one has to be very, very careful as to how much time one should leave for bleaching so that it does not damage the fabric. But at the same time, hydrogen peroxide has an advantage of being low cost, flexibility of application and the possibility of one bath that means in one bath you can do the scouring and bleaching procedure. So, that is an added advantage that we have when we use hydrogen peroxide. Then comes the process which is called mercerizing. Mercerization is a process in which textile typically cotton are treated with caustic solution to improve the properties such as fiber strength, shrinkage resistance, lustre and dye affinity. The caustic actually rearranges the cellulose molecule in the fiber of cotton to produce these changes. The treatment consists of immersing the yarn or fabric in a solution of hydrogen peroxide which is caustic soda for short periods of time, usually less than 4 minutes. The material is then treated with water or acid to neutralize the sodium hydroxide and the purpose of mercerizing is to increase the luster of the cotton fabric surface. Area of cotton and length of yarn is reduced. It removes immature dead cotton. Tensile strength is also increased. So, it has multi purpose, but then the timing should not be too long, otherwise it will harm the cotton fabric surface. This is how the mercerizing machine looks like. It is an open machine. Mercerization is an industrial process involving sodium hydroxide for cotton yarn particularly or fabrics to increase the luster and dyeability. But the mercerization of denim is usually carried out after the denim is woven and so it is different from the common, more common method of mercerizing cotton yarn. De de denim is a different ball game altogether. First it is woven and then it is mercerized, whereas here the fabric is first or the yarn is first treated for mercerization. Long staple yarn fi fiber yarn greater than the twist, greater is the tensile strength of mercerized ma material. So, that is an added advantage when we are talking about mercerization process. Mercerization leads to a number of changes in the fabric properties, a more circular fabric cross section, increased luster, increased tensile strength, added advantage for technical textile, increased apparent color depth after dyeing, improvement, improved dyeability with uniformity in appearance of the dyed cotton increased fiber moisture regain, increased water absorption, improved dimensional stability. So, there are so many properties which mercerizing can bring in and they are mostly advantageous for because all these are going to lead to good natural dyeing at the end of the process. If the we as the name suggests of this lecture, it is a lecture on preparation of the fiber or fabric before natural dyeing. And we saw that singeing, desizing, scouring, bleaching and now mercerizing is all making one by one step for preparation of cotton particularly for natural dyeing. 
And this of course, is also being done for synthetic dye preparation, but there the dye uptake is quite voluntary as compared to natural dyes. So, therefore, preparation is not required or may be required to only some extent in the case of synthetic dyes. However, in the case of natural dyes, all these processes which I now named the singeing process, the desizing process, the scouring process, the mercerizing process all are needed equally and they all add on to new properties of the fabric which are desirable before natural dyeing can be conducted. Then comes mordenting. Now, mordenting we have been talking about quite some time and in different contexts I have told that for natural dyeing we need a bridging head which is called mordant which is usually a metal salt. This we have been discussing for quite some time. After completing these preparation steps, you can proceed to the natural dyeing process. Mordenting is the first step before dyeing. The specific procedure may vary based on the type of fabric and the natural dye material to be used. Always it is preferred to perform small scale tests to ensure the desired results before dyeing larger quantities of fabric. So, small test sample should be done and then only one should proceed with larger quantities of the fabric. The purpose of mordenting is to improve color fastness and help the fabric to bond to the dye. Because as I told you, it is acting as a bridging head between the colorant molecule and the fiber and the process requires choosing an appropriate modern based on your dye source and fabric that is alum for protein fiber like silk and wool and iron for cellulose fiber like cotton and linen. Dissolving the mordant in hot water and add to it to the dye bath. Immerse the fabric in the dye bath for 1 to 2 hours. Rinse the fabric thoroughly with water to remove excess mordant. How mordants attach? Now, we have seen that in some of the slides, but now we will look at it more carefully. The dye molecules have mostly open or free OH and C double bond O sites that is the carbonyl and the hydroxyl sites where generally any metal species can get chelated. The dye molecules are capable of forming five membered chelate rings with metal ions such as aluminum plus 3 or Fe plus 3. The ortho dihydroxy structure in purpurin is ideally suited to offer chelation site. So, the C double bond O and the adjoining OH one carbon away in the ring is so appropriately positioned that the metal can chelate at that and become a bridging head. Different types of mordenting methods, we have talked about it fleetingly, but now we will look at it in a little more detail. Pre mordenting. Premordenting is a crucial step in natural dyeing that involves creating fibers or fabric with mordants before dyeing to enhance color fastness and improve the bonding of the dye to the material. Mordants are substances that form complexes with both the dye and the fiber, creating a more stable and permanent color. This is a method where modern treatment is done before dyeing. Simultaneous mordenting. So, before dyeing we will call it pre-mordenting as the name suggests. 
Simultaneous mordanting, I have mentioned fleetingly, it is also called metamordanting. The mordant is added in the dye bath itself along with the dye. The process is simple, simpler than pre and post mordanting, it is a one step process, whereas pre mordanting or post mordanting are two step process but is applicable to only a few dyes. So, we cannot do meta, um, meta mordanting in all the cases. Post mordanting is another important step in natural dyeing that occurs after the dyeing has been done. Looking at a little more detail of the pre mordanting method, here is a basic guide to the pre mordanting method of natural dyeing material needed, fabric or fiber, this can be wool, silk, cotton, linen or any other natural fibers. Moderns that are commonly used are alum, iron, copper, tin, tannin rich substances like tannic acid. Copper we try to restrict, why? Because it is hazardous and it is not under the eco friendly category. Water is used for the preparation of modern solution. Steps cleaning the fiber, ensuring that the fiber of fabric is clean and free from any impurities such as oil and dirt, that means it should be nicely scoured. Prepare the modern solution, dissolve the mordant in hot water. The amount of mordant depends on the type of fiber and the desired color intensity. Alum is commonly used as modern and some people typically use between 8 to 15 percent alum to the weight of the dry fiber. But of course, we try to reduce this, so much is not required. Actually, 2 to percent of alum is more than sufficient and does not require such high percentages, that is our own experience. Meta mordanting, which is also called simultaneous mordanting, the fabric mordant and dyes were all added to a flux at the same time. The fabric was kept on the machine for 60 minutes at a temperature of 80 degrees centigrade to dye with the mordant of the dyeing process. So, dye and mordant are all put together. At, 60 degree, at 80 degrees for 1 hour. Then thereafter treatment was done to remove the unfixed dyes from the fabric, it is washed. This is applicable in few cases, dye extract from rubia cordifolia stems were co-extracted in the dye bath with mordant and then the fabric was dipped into the dye bath. So, it is possible in some cases as what I mentioned a while ago, that not all cases are meant for meta mordanting, but many larger cases are meant for pre mordanting and a very few cases are meant for post mordanting. Post mordanting involves treating the dyed fabric or dyed material with mordants to enhance color fastness or to achieve different color shades. Post mordanting allows for greater flexibility and control over the final color of the dyed material. Here is a general guide for post mordanting in natural dyeing. Mordants, common post mordants include alum, iron, copper, tin and tannin rich substances like tannic acid. Of course, here again I would say copper we avoid or we take in 0.5 percent only if needed. Steps that are required is prepare the post mordanting solution separately dissolving the chosen mordant in hot water. The amount of post mordant used depends on the type of fiber, the original dye and the desired color outcome. Soak the dyed material. Submerge the dyed material in the post mordanted solution, 
ensure that the material is fully saturated, heat the postmodent bath, gently heat the postmodent bath to allow the fiber to absorb the postmodent, avoid boiling as excessive heat can damage some fibers, maintain a temperature below boiling point around 82 to 93 degrees centigrade and let it soak for an hour or more depending on how, what is the color intensity that you require. A typical flow chart is described here for all the three processes, where A shows that mordant was mordanting was done at 70 degrees for 30 minutes, then it was cooled and then dyeing was done. This is an example of pre mordanting. B is showing where the mordant dye, water, fabric, everything is put together and it is done at 80 degrees for 60 minutes and then after treated. The third one shows that dye and water are first uh, immersed, the fabric is immersed in dye and water at 80 degrees for 60 minutes and then there is a cold wash and then water mordant and fabric, the same dyed fabric is immersed at 70 degrees for 30 minutes and then it is treated. So, this is how we show a recipe, what is the procedure to which it is heated, how at from room temperatures gradually the temperature is increased to 70 degrees over a period of half an hour. And the, this is the standardized procedure for mordanting with pre mordanting, meta mordanting and post mordanting. Now, looking at these two, this slide I had shown earlier also. Rubia cordifolia or madder or manjis is dyed with pre mordanting method, different salts batch 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 are different mordants, but this entire left side shows it is pre mordanted. That means, first mordanting with one salt the another salt, then third salt, they were carried out separately and then dyeing was carried out. On the right hand side, which is the post mordanting method, the same salts were treated after dyeing with manjist and they showed much paler color, which means that for rubia cordifolia, pre mordanting is the standardized method. So, this is how we try to find out what is the best method to follow for a particular dye. We take an example of turmeric dye. You will see that turmeric pre mordanting is not as good as post mordanting. Although there are very subtle differences, but I would see and I have seen the k by s value more than the color on the slide it matters, the k by s value which was evaluated and found that it was much deeper in the post mordanting as pre mordanting. So, for turmeric the recommended method of mordanting is post mordanting, whereas in manjist or madder it was pre mordanting. If we take an example of onion skin, pre mordanting is better than post mordanting, because many of the colors are in the batch 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 are lighter in the post mordanting. So, when we make an evaluation, we first carry out these basic testing by doing both pre mordanting and post mordanting with the same extract. 
if the extract has different dye content, it will show different result. So, that is the reason why I said first we make extract, then we divide it into two halves. One extract is used for pre modenting, that means pre modented fabric is immersed in that extract, and in the second case, we use the fabric first for dyeing with the extract and do the second part as post modenting. So, then we are very sure that we have not changed the concentration of the dye, we have only changed the metal salt and we have changed the metal salt whether we are using it as pre mordant or post mordant. So, preparing the dye bath is the next step for natural dyeing. The purpose is that extracted color from the natural dye is now ready. Extraction process collect and prepare the dye material whether it is plants, roots, insect. Simmer the dye material in water to extract the color or use any other extraction method. Once you have the extract in your hand, then only you can proceed for dyeing. The duration varies based on the dye source. Strain the dye bath to remove solid particles. Again and again I am telling this because if there are solid particles in the dye solution, they can create a lot of uh, unevenness on the dyed fabric. And therefore, the dye solution should be devoid of any solid particles. Once you have a clear dye solution, you can proceed for dyeing and the process is that immerse the pre modented fabric into the dye bath, maintaining a suitable temperature usually 70 to 80 degrees and immerse for an extended period of an hour or even sometimes to one day depending on the desired color intensity. Remember, when the cloth is wet, it looks darker, when it dries, it looks lighter. So, you have to keep that in mind. Stir the fabric occasionally to ensure even color div, uh, distribution, that you are stirring and constantly every part of the surface is in contact with the dye solution. If you do not stir it, what will happen? Some of the surface will be continuously exposed and they will keep on taking the dye in absorbing, whereas some other parts which are folded will not be able to get the dye molecule up to their surface and therefore, it will look uneven. After dyeing, let the fabric cool in the dye bath. Dyeing can also be conducted in jigger machine or winch machine. And therefore, whichever machine one is using, whether it is a soft flow machine, whether it is a jigger machine, it is a winch machine, all these machines are meant for dye, dyeing. And one has to ensure that dyeing is done by proper agitation of the fabric. If the fabric is not agitated regularly or not moved and is stagnant in the dye solution, there is a high probability of only surfaces which are in contact with the dye solution will get more colorant than the other parts and which will cause unevenness in dyeing and that is not a good idea. These are some of the dyeing machine. On the left hand side is a jigger dyeing machine and on the right hand side is the winch dyeing machine. It is just that you know they are constructed in such a manner that the fabric can rotate uh, very easily within that main uh, tub and it is coming out of the dye solution again getting exposed to the air and then going back. Whereas, that is what happens in winch. Whereas, in jigger, there are two rollers. From one roller to another roller, the fabric is moving and in between, it is taking a dip in the dye bath. 
So, continuously the entire surface is getting uniformly coated with the dye solution and there is no reason or no occasion for unevenness to happen. Rinsing and washing then becomes very important step in the dyeing process. Most of the times the naturally dyed fabric should be washed after overnight period and this is our observation. We have seen that whenever we have washed it immediately, the color content was much feeble, but when we left it for overnight and rinsed it the next morning, there was better penetration of the color. It allows the color to penetrate well, rinsing the dyed fabric with cool water until the water runs clear. Wash the fabric with a mild detergent, preferably easy or genteel, to remove any remaining dye and impurity. Now, why I am vouching for a mild soap? Because natural dyes are very susceptible or very sensitive towards harsh detergents and therefore, they should be treated or washed with gentle or mild non-ionic detergents. Remember that different fabric may require variation in the preparation process and the choice of mordant. Remember that different fabric may require variation in preparation process and the choice of mordant and dye source can significantly impact the final result. Always conduct small scale tests before dyeing larger quantities to ensure desired results. By regular practice, one can attain good results from dyeing. It is not non-doable. It is very much doable. The only thing is that one should follow the processes very carefully and then only the desired results will be obtained. Washing therefore, is really very crucial. When to give it a final wash? After natural dyeing, the dyed fabric should not be washed immediately. As I told you, this has been our experience that naturally natural colorants take time to penetrate into the fabric. Hence, leaving the dyed fabric overnight is always a better idea. Using pH neutral mild detergent is recommended, preferably non-ionic detergents like easy or gentile. Pre-mix your choice of natural detergent with cold water and create a water bath to submerge your naturally dyed fabric into it. Do not pour the detergent straight onto the fabric. Fabric softener is not recommended as it may leave a film of residue on the fabric. So, one has to take utmost care to understand what are the doables of natural dyeing process. And in this lecture, we have mainly you know concentrated on the preparation of how to make cotton, silk, wool ready for natural dyeing. You cannot take just a cloth from the market and just dip it in natural dye. Why? Because the singeing, the scouring, the desizing, the mercerizing, whatever is required, especially scouring is very important. If it is unscoured material, it will never pick up the dye to its dye content and a lot of dye will be wasted in the dye bath. So, in conclusion, Preparing fabric before natural dyeing is essential to ensure that the dye adheres well to the fibers and produces vibrant long lasting colors. Here is a stepwise guide to preparing fabric for natural dyeing.
Scouring as I said is a very important step. Scouring is the process of removing any natural oils or waxes, dirts or other impurities from the fabric. If we do not remove them, the dye will not adhere to it. This helps the dye penetrate the fibers more evenly. Use a mild detergent or scouring agent appropriate for the fabric type. Follow the instruction of the detergent package or scouring agent for the correct dilution ratio and temperature. Typically, you will soak the fabric in hot water with the detergent for more than an hour and then rinse it thoroughly. Every step you have to thoroughly rinse. Then comes the mordanting. Mordants are substances that help fix the dye to the fabric and enhance color fastness. Common mordants for natural dyeing include alum, iron, copper and tin and tannic acids. The modern mordanting process involves soaking the scoured fabric in a mordant solution. The concentration of the mordant and the duration of the soaking depends on the specific dye and fabric type. Follow a reliable recipe or guideline for mordanting to ensure proper fixation of the dye and to avoid damaging the fabric. Because it is very important if we overload the fabric with mordant at the pre mordanting stage, where will the dye come and adhere? So, it is important that we put the mordant in a small ratio only to act as a bridging head between the fiber and the colorant molecule. Because the role of the mordant is only to uphold the fiber and the colorant together, it has no other role and which makes the dye adhere in a more penetrated manner. The dye adherence becomes better if we use a mordant. I will give you an example that when we do the dyeing reaction, we often or every time I should say, we have a controlled sample and a mordanted sample. And even in the slides that I showed where dyed fabric was shown, the standard was the control. Control may show deeper color, but when you wash it, most of the color, 90 percent of the color will be gone. But in the mordanted sample, it may not show that deep a color, but it whatever it is showing will remain even after washing, which means that the color is not on just the superficial surface. It has penetrated into the fabric and that is what is most important in mordanting and understanding the mordanting process. Some people may say that oh in this slide it shows that your standard or your control is darker than the mordanted samples. But when you come to the eventuality, when the two fabrics are washed, the control sample, the color will run off. 90 percent of the color will be gone and it will look very faded with just one wash. Whereas, a similar wash of the fabric of the mordanted fabric will show lot of color still remaining, only small amount of superficial dye will run off in the washing. So, that is the role of mordant and we should realize that and understand the use of mordant. It is not necessary to use very high quantities of mordant. In fact, we have slowly gradually brought down 
the percentage to almost 0.5 percent or 1 percent. We are not using more than 2 percent of any mordant and in fact, when I go on to tell you the lecture on rare earth salts, we have used 0.4 percent of rare earth salts such as cerium, yttrium and rubidium. So, these are uh, iridium and these are all rare earth salts which are used in very small quantities and yet they do the mordanting very effectively. The process specifi uh, specification to be followed is the dye bath preparation. Prepare the dye bath by extracting color from your chosen natural dye material such as plant matter, roots or insects. You can immerse the dye material in water to extract the color or use some specified extraction method. However, you should get the dye extract and then go about doing the dyeing process. After preparing the dye bath, strain out all the solid material and bring the dye bath to a desired temperature. Place the mordanted fabric into the dye bath slowly and simmering gently stirring occasionally because as I told you that the surface should always be exposed and therefore, stirring and simmering is very important until you achieve the desired color depth. So, you can always take out and check and keep on rotating in the same dye bath, it will gradually take. Now, let me tell you one more thing that the initial 15 minutes to 20 minutes, there is a very rapid uptake of dye and then it kind of reaches an equilibrium and then it is very, very slow. So, one has to let it simmer for some time and that is the reason why you cannot take out the fabric after 15 minutes and say oh it has taken up most of the dye now the dyeing is over. Because the dyeing process is like that, the kinetics of dyeing is like that, that initially when there is a fabric which is ready to take the dye is actually receptive more than after it has received the dyes for some time and then it is taking the dye slowly, but it is still taking the dye. So, we should allow it to simmer and occasionally stir it until the desired result or color depth is attained. The duration of dyeing varies depending on many factors such as type of dye material, fabric, desired color intensity. So, you have to make a recipe. Refer to the dye recipe or guidelines for specific instruction. How you want it to dye is what you will have to decide, but there are well defined recipes also available and you can just follow them word by word. Rinsing and finishing is then most important part that once the dyeing is done, once the fabric has reached the desired color, remove it from the dye bath and rinse it thoroughly with lukewarm water or even tap water until the rinse water runs clear. There will be some what color that will run off, those are all superficial colors which are on the surface of the fabric. You can then wash the fabric with mild detergent to remove any excess dye or mordant residue and allow the fabric to air dry in shade and follow specific drying instruction for the fabric type. Because it is very important to follow the procedure very carefully, any mistake and there the dyeing process goes bad. Now, you may feel that this was not told to me while this lecture was done that I have to take precaution. Precaution has to take, has to be taken at every stage 
right from the preparation of the fabric that is singeing. You cannot heat the fabric too much that the fabric only gets burnt off. Only the hairy part in the singeing should get burnt off. Then comes desizing. You cannot do desizing with very harsh chemicals with so, you have to just limit it to just removing the starch and the PVA and other things which are present. Then comes the scouring which also has to be done very carefully unless and until we are careful about scouring and mercerizing, we may even damage the cloth. So, therefore, care has to be taken. Then once the, prepare, the fabric is prepared, and after every stage the fabric has to be washed. Remember that and once that is then done, then modenting and dyeing and then finally finishing occurs. So, ev at every stage the fabric has to be you know completed in a proper manner, no rushing up and no hurrying up and with this we have come to an end of this lecture. Of course, some dyers recommend curing, but that is another story. We will deal with it in some other lecture in detail. We have come to an end of this lecture and thank you for your attention.